NextGen Web was on Capitol Hill recently covering an Alliance for Public Technology event on telemedicine and its critical reliance on broadband. The panel was well attended by seasoned experts working in the field of e-health. They included Betty Levine, Director of e-health and the Telemedicine Division at Georgetown University in Washington. Dr. Max Tachura, the Director of the Center for Telehealth at the Medical College of Georgia. Attorney Ken Kelly, the Director of the Washington Office for the Children's Partnership. And finally, Dr. Jay Sanders, the President and CEO of the Global Telemedicine Group at Johns Hopkins University. After the event, NextGen Web caught up with Dr. Sanders to get his perspective on the importance of telemedicine to preventative care and its proven ability to significantly reduce health care costs for those with a broadband connection to the Internet. During your presentation, you um, said telemedicine was the umbilical cord to health care. Could you elaborate on that a little bit? Sure. Well, uh, basically that broadband communication provides the conduit uh, by which information, whether it's educational, whether it's diagnostic, whether it's therapeutic, information is transported from a location where it exists to a location where it's needed. So from an academic medical center uh, to a rural hospital, from a physician's office to a patient's home. Now, could you walk our viewers through when you got your start in telemedicine? I think they might be surprised uh, when that was, and sort of how telemedicine over the years has developed and sort of where it is today. Well, I got started, actually introduced uh, to it in 1967 uh, by my professor of medicine when I was a resident in medicine. And when he first told me about his idea of beginning to examine patients over television, I thought it was the stupidest idea I'd ever heard of, and here I am uh, 19, in 2007 um, working on his stupid idea. <laughs> now, over the years, your involvement in telemedicine, you talked about how um, the examining room has changed. You used hypertension as an example where you take someone's blood pressure um, in a doctor's office versus in the comfort of their own home. Can you elaborate on that a little bit for us? Oh, absolutely. Um, we First of all, we, we began to look at um, bringing the exam room into the patient's home uh, when we realized that if we could see the patient a week or two uh, before they ended up in the emergency department in uh, an acute condition, we could probably avoid uh, that um, initial evaluation. So we began to develop technology that would allow us to examine patients in their home. And as we began to apply the technology, we realized something we had never thought about before, and that is that the exam room has to be where the patient is because the values and the evaluation that we take of them in their living room is much better than the evaluation we get taking it in our exam room. The blood pressure is a much more natural blood pressure. They do not get scared by the fact that uh, I have a white coat on and they get so-called white coat hypertension. The child with asthma, for example, my taking their, uh, their pulmonary function studies in my office which is not where they live, um, is ridiculous because the value uh, is not predicated on the air that they're breathing in my office. It's based upon the antigens that they're breathing in their home. So uh, it turns out that for most conditions, examining the patient in their environment, not in our environment, uh, is better medical care. Now, is it, is it fair to say that telemedicine could lead to significant cost savings in the healthcare industry and lead to savings in Medicare as well. Oh, absolutely. First of all, in its initial application in rural America, um, it uh, led to data that showed us that 80% of the people who previously had to be transported to an academic medical center um, now could stay in their rural community. So think about the cost and the time there. And secondly, when you consider the fact that many of these patients are covered by Medicaid, and Medicaid not only pays for the medical bill, but pays for the transportation, there's a huge potential saving there. But where I think we're going to see the greatest saving is based upon all of the telehome care studies that we have done. And that is, we dramatically enhance compliance on the part of the patient. So we significantly reduce their rehospitalization rate. And as you and I know, the biggest cost in healthcare is hospitalization.
Well, Dr. Sanders, you've been involved with telemedicine for, for some 40 years now, and we appreciate your leadership and really appreciate your, your time talking with us today. Well, thank you very much, but I really ought to thank my professor of medicine, Dr. Ken Bird, at the Mass General Hospital. This is NextGenWeb.org reporting from the Russell Senate Building in Washington.